welcome back to Let's Play Space Quest 2 VGA Remake by Infamous Adventures. This is Big Los, and we just took care of Vohal and aborted the launch of the insurance salesman clones. So now let's see if we can figure out a way off this rock. And apparently we can't fall off the stairs. I think I mentioned that last episode. Oh well. The box is actually an oxygen mask receptacle. It is currently closed. And we're not going to get it right now. It's not an interactive dispenser like Pez 2.0. It's the regular kind. What, in the future you talk to the Pez? You get a whiff of pure oxygen from this dispenser. Ah, that's the good stuff. Eh, I've had pure oxygen. You rather think that it's a mask dispenser, not a food dispenser. Didn't really do anything for me. It looks cold and hard. You are walking through a clear, tubular passageway, which seems to wind in and out along the outer perimeter of the asteroid. Great. Let's touch it. Try as you might, you won't be able to rip the asteroid apart with your bare hands. Besides, you can't reach. Why is asteroid capitalized? This emergency exit tube is made of a rather thin, reinforced plastic, especially for a tube that's exposed to space. Even with his emergency escapes, Vohal was cheap. Probably figured he'd never need it. Hey, asteroid! I killed Vohal! Pretty cool, huh? No response. Yeah, pretty cool. Nothing much you can say about clear stuff. Okay. It's not an in- You can't smell the rock. It's in the vacuum of space, and you're over here in the tube. Besides being thin, there's nothing interesting you smell about the air here. Yeah, let's just smash through the tube, go out there and nibble on a rock. That'll keep the coroner confused for years, thinking it was actually some huge, well-covered conspiracy because no one would ever do that. There's no coroners here. The air is thin around here. There's no way a coroner would ever come around here. Self-destruct will commence in four minutes. The bright stars of space are like a beacon calling to you, crying for escape from this doomed place. Yeah. You can see evidence of the decaying orbit of the asteroid. The exterior of the asteroid is heating up from ever-increasing collisions with atmospheric molecules. Kinda cool. Labion draws closer as the asteroid falls to the whims of its gravitational pull. Things are really heating up. You are walking through a clear, tubular passageway which seems to wind in and out along the outer perimeter of the asteroid. The planet of Labian spins nearby. Yep. Reaching for the stars is good. Escaping from here with your life is better. No, dying is better. Even if you had a spacesuit with which you could survive, this is a very bad time to go rock climbing. Yep. The glass tubes will not bear this heat much longer. Reaching for the stop. This is a bad time to want to go skydiving. There's never a bad time for that. Hey, Labion, you suck! No response. Yeah, you tell him, Roger. Could you stop falling into the gravitational pull of planet Labion until I'm finished escaping? No response. All signs point to no. Tubes, if you don't make it out of this, I want you to know. I won't remember you. No response. Well, that's mean. Your words would be muted by the dead of space. Huh. If you're going to follow your nose, you'd best follow it to the nearest way out of here first. You can't smell the rocks through the vacuum of space. It smells a bit like melting plastic. Oh, I know what that smells like. Well, what's to say about the smells of planet Labian? The grass smells sweet, the people smell foul, the little pink creatures have an escape tunnel that smells like squid. And we didn't get killed by it. Oh, you've had a pretty good taste of Planet Labian already. <laughs> yeah. Though I suppose it could be considered to be made of countless pebbles. None of them are the cocoa kind. Oh. -ho. The heat is becoming palpable here. You'd better get to safety and fast. You've seen space operas, so you know that space is a pretty tasteless place. Oh, space operas aren't tasteless. Alright, what happens if we... go this way without the oxygen mask? A section of the glass tubing has fractured from combined stress. The pressurized atmosphere rushes for the relative vacuum of space. How 
did his head blow up? Due to the effect of the air rushing by you to get out the hole, the air in your lungs is sucked out and you find it impossible to get more. You weren't really that close to the end of the game anyway. No big loss. Yes, I was. Wait, did he pull an Arnold Schwarzenegger from Total Recall? Or more like a Kohagen? No, I figured you'd just suffocate and die, wouldn't you? Alright, let's turn the speed all the way up. And we'll grab the mask this time. You open the box, and noticing an oxygen mask, remove it and close the box. And then we'll just go to that area over there. And we'll put the mask on. Here we go. This is an emergency oxygen mask. Really? Okay. A section of the blast tubing has fractured from combined stress. The pressurized atmosphere rushes for the relative vacuum of space. Fortunately, wearing the mask protects you from suffocation. It's serendipity. No longer needing the mask, you remove it and stow it for later use. What later use? The slowly curving walls match the slowly curving nature of this hallway. Yeah. Green lights flash here, as if pretending to provide some useful information. I thought that's a camera. The floor looks very clean and well polished. The walls feel sturdy and ice cold. They feel warm to the touch. They feel warm to the touch. So that's a light. The walls feel sturdy. The walls. The walls. You can't speak, creepy asteroid base wall. What brand of flow wax is used on you? No response. I don't know. Hey, can you get a bit festive? Some of you changed to red, some to silver, and some to gold. It's cold enough to have a Christmas party around here. No response. <laughs> Party poopers. Uh, no. It smells of, in equal parts, questionable usefulness, dubious purpose, and suspect functionality. No, Roger, the tagline that got you into space was experience the delights of kissing green parts, not experience the arts of kissing green lights. I don't get it. Kissing green you parts? You spit on the floor. That'll show these neat freaks. Yeah, gross. There's nothing here, Roger. It's not food. There's nothing... Alright. I think that's about it. The walls smell metallic. Oh, yeah. It smells like flora. It smells of, in equal parts, questionable usefulness. Alright, let's go this way. The walls feel... Ah, windows. You see the interior of the asteroid through this window. Most of it is cavernous, but you do see that the other hallways and rooms have been bored into the massive rock. This hallway must curve around the other rim of the asteroid. Yep. You poke the glass with your finger to see if the glass is secure. Then you realize you don't want to know if it isn't. You're right. I can see right through you. So true. You press your nose to the glass and make a funny face. Sadly, no one is in the other hallways of the asteroid to see your vicious mocking. You lick the window, fight to free your tongue, and then wipe the lost taste buds off the window. Oh man. Ah, escape pod. Through these hatches, you see shuttle pods of some kind. Alright, let's press the button. There are no latches on the closed walls leading into the escape pods. One must assume that they open automatically in an emergency. What? Am I close to the end of the game? I hope so. I'd rather not have to hear you talk to inanimate objects much longer. <laughs> the escape hatch smells a bit metallic. The escape... You breathe on the glass and with your finger depict yourself standing over a defeated Vohal, which looks surprisingly like two stick figures wrestling. After a moment, the fog from your breath fades. 
You know, in the AGI version, you could uh, press that button. Yo, let's look at this thing. Whoa, that robot doesn't look very friendly. He looks like an ED-209. Talk to the hand. Crap, that didn't work. I better book it out of here. I wonder why the robot keeps moving even with the dialogue boxes. Can't we talk about this? Okay, so no time was going, but the robot moves. What's up with that? The escape hatch smells of- I don't want to get close enough to find out what it smells like. This- As the beam of light from the droid guard hits you, you begin to feel a rather curious sensation. Unfortunately, you don't have the time to figure out what the sensation is before you die. Well, at least it was painless. Alright, let's go use that taste icon on it then. That's probably not the best <laughs> idea you've ever had. <laughs> That's... I don't want to get close enough to find out what it smells like. Alright, I don't think we can activate it from here, so let's go into this other place. There is a self-destruct override button on this control panel. And the sign below it reads, out of order. Straight out of space balls. The walkway is an emergency exit of sorts. It allows access to the escape pods in case of disaster. Like the asteroid crashing into the planet. Yep. A large tunnel connects to a walkway high above the hangar bar. Uh-huh. You've been in here for a while now, you're trying to escape, and you're looking at the wall? Again? You never let me down, do you, Roger Wilco? <laughs> it's the transporter tubes you used to get around when you first arrived on the asteroid. Uh, no voice acting? You can't take the walkway with you. You can look like an ass trying to take it with you, though. The wall isn't worth touching. You can't reach it from here. You can't... You press the button, but it won't move. It probably just needs some lubrication. Oh, I got some in my mouth. Hello? Anyone there? You hear no answer. Uh-huh. Walkway, move me further along. You're not all there, are you, Roger? <laughs> There's nothing and nobody to talk to. It's too far away, and you know from previous experience it's not voice activated. Right. It smells like it's too far away to smell anything. Hmm. The control panel smells like bananas. Press too many times. It smells like feet. Uh. It smells like Vohal. Ah, oh, no. Nah. Yeah, that is odd. It smells like you need to get the heck out of here before this whole station blows up. <laughs> Getting existential, aren't you, Roger? Oh, really? It tastes like a dirty wall. Are you satisfied now? Quite. You can't taste anything except your own fear. Um, okay. It tastes like chicken. Or it would if chicken tasted like polycarbonate alloy. You move your face closer to the button and lubricate it with your saliva. Hmm, that didn't work. Perhaps you should have searched the bathroom more thoroughly. Oh, I'm sure we could have found some fluids in there, huh? Yeah. Alright, let's try this again. Let's go this way and interact with everything. It's the escape walkway you've been walking along. The walls are made of some unknown metal, Corbinite maybe. Like the Corbinite maneuver? You're on an escape platform high above the hangar bay you were brought into just a little while ago. It's the shuttle you came in on. It keeps bringing you to bad places. And now we can't escape with it? It's the giant doors which open into space through which your shuttle came in. Hmm. Not only couldn't you open the doors, you can't even reach them. Can't touch the walls from here. You can't access the shuttle from here. There is nothing of interest there for you to take. Okay. Hello, walkway. You're looking down in the dumps today. Cheer up! The world's not going to end. Oh, uh, oops. 
<laughs> Nothing you say will stop it from being a wall. I'm not trying to convince it otherwise. There's no one there to talk to. In four minutes. I am your father. Nice. Open in the name of some deity which allows for door opening. Nothing you say. It's too far away. Not from here you can't. Nope. The shuttle smells like the Empire. I am your father. It's too far away. Smells like ape. Huh. <laughs> tastes like chicken? Tastes like chicken. Yep. It tastes like a cross between a goanna and a koala. Definitely Australian in some way. Why? Because it's down under? It's too far away. It tastes like the ground of an arena after a Guns N' Roses concert. Is that supposed to be nasty? Not from here, you can't. It tastes like a... Okay. That's about it for this little area. Now we got this area. What? But that's identical to... What it said on the other room. What, they, they just couldn't assign the voices over there to over here, too? Couldn't they, like, just patch it so it does? Hello, Infamous Adventures, you watching this? You need to assign all the voices from that other room to here because they're identical. Yeah. Alright, so let's just keep going, then. Oh, we can press that. Oh, okay, cool. The robot has apparently decided that it is permissible for you to be here. It just decided, huh? Okay, I guess we'll just save in here. You are inside one of the emergency escape vehicles. There's a console at the front of the vehicle and a sleeping chamber at the rear. Uh huh. The chamber is a bed of sorts, enclosed in a large plexiglass cylinder. The occupant of such a chamber would be placed in suspended animation and kept alive for an indefinite period of time. Right. You are inside one- You are- The door to the shuttle is shut. It's sealed automatically when you entered. The only outstanding features on the panel are a launch button and an oxygen meter. The only- through the viewport, you can see portions of the asteroid breaking up from the intense heat due to orbital decay. It's only a matter of time before you burn up with it. Typo! I see a typo! Through the viewport, you can see portions of the asteroid breaking up from the intense heat due to orbital decay. Only a matter of teamy. You have no reason to enter the sleep chamber right now. There's nothing to touch. There's nothing to touch. You just got away from the robot that wants to kill you. Do you really want to leave the shuttle? Yeah, I do. There's nothing to touch. There's nothing. In, in space, space, nobody, nobody can, can hear, hear you screaming. screaming. Or in your case, sob. Huh. Goodbye, asteroid. I win! Open. This late in the game and you're still trying stuff like that. I feel sorry for your mother. So do I. <laughs> Open. This late in the game and you're still trying stuff. So do I. In, in space, space, no. Yeah. In, in space, space, no. Coming up on the two minute warning. Self destruct will commence in two minutes. Nobody can hear you. No. No? No. Yes. The shuttle smells surprisingly clean and fresh. Well, that's good. The shuttle smells. The shuttle smell You can't do anything with it that panel. Smells like plexiglass. Oh, you can't lick that? Ah. Oh. There's nothing. The door tastes tinny. Tinny. The door doesn't smell like anything. Huh. There's no There's nothing. You consider pushing the launch button with your tongue. Why not just use your hand like a normal person, though? Because it's not fun you that way. Can we use objects in here? Not right now, and that's not voice acted. Keep trying that. If you keep at it, 
Wait, we can't. It doesn't work. We can't scratch the glass. As data. That'd be a cool way to die. As data would say, intriguing. You know, you put a little nick in the glass and it leaks out. Of Cancellation button? Oh, now she tells me. Straight out of space balls. Straight out of space balls, I swear. You are inside. I think that movie just came out when the AGI version of this game came out. You wish that was a good idea. I wish. I can tell you're. So you should find it. Will I should find a good place to sit down and eat. Spot would say, I can tell you. So this burger is totally useless. You can't use it for anything, huh? You know the gas is probably hydrogen sulfide and it's flammable. They should have had it explode. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Six? What about seven? Just kidding. Self-destruct commencing. Goodbye, world! More bad news, Roger Wilco. The asteroid's orbit has finally decayed to the point where contact with the molecular contents of Labion's upper atmosphere has been achieved. The result of this friction is a tremendous heat buildup. Despite being a very dense chunk of matter, the asteroid flames out, broiling you with it. Another victim in the heartless universe of adventure. That's probably what it said word for word in the AGI version. Okay, so we could just press the button and escape. But I'm gonna restore to right here. And then we're gonna go through that whole sequence all over again. We're gonna go at full speed. And then we're going to see what happens if we don't stop the launch of the clones. You are once again reconstituted, this time to the correct size. You notice that the clones are gone. Probably ought to be launched. An examination of his repulsively turgid fabric-encased mass reveals nothing other than the tubes which supplied him oxygen. You do notice the letters SHSR, written in pen on the back of his left hand. Now, I forget what SHSR was signifying. You open the box. I'm sure it meant something. Like, Thank you for pushing the self -destruct mechanism. one letter off or something. This ship will self-destruct in exactly five minutes. Oh, that's right, it was tits. As Spock. T-I-T-S. A section of the glass tubing has fractured from fortunately wearing the mask No longer needing the mask, you remove it and stow it for later use. If only we could use it for later. The walls... I guess we can't go back the way we came like you can in the AGI version. When you go back the way you came, it automatically engages the oxygen mask on you. The robot has apparently decided that it is permissible for you to be here. And since we clicked on everything, let's just press the button. You hit the big red button marked ESCAPE. Warning! Warning. Emergency, Emergency escape, escape vehicle, vehicle launch, launch sequence, sequence has begun. begun. Go. And we did it. Phew. You're going to have to stop cutting these escapes so close, Roger. Well, you must feel pretty good right now. You've stopped Bohol from carrying out his threat of salesman infestation. 
ultimately destroying the twisted scientist himself. No, I didn't. You also managed to save your own skin. Yes, I did. And just look at that score. Pretty darned impressive. Unfortunately, you failed to stop the launch of the clones dooming Xenon to the most horrible of fates. Way to go, Roger. Uh, it's the box cover from the original Space Quest 2, the AGI version. Yeah, but I survived. You hit the big red button marked Escape. Warning, Warning. Emergency, emergency escape, escape vehicle, vehicle launch, launch sequence has, has begun. begun. Isn't that the most important thing if I survived? I mean, who cares about the rest? Besides, it's not like insurance salesmen kill anybody. Can they just sell insurance? And we did it again. Phew! You're going to have to stop cutting these escapes so close, Roger. Well, you must feel pretty good right now. You've stopped Bohal from carrying out his threat of salesman infestation, ultimately destroying the twisted scientist himself. Yes, I did this time. You also managed to save your own skin. Yep. And just look at that score. Pretty darned impressive. Ten points off. Suddenly, a warning signal draws your attention to the front oxygen meter. It reads low and dropping fast. This is just great. You knew it was too good to be true. You have maybe five minutes of air left. Well, Roger, it was nice knowing you. Yeah, it takes a long time for the air to run out. So I'm not going to show it. It just takes way too long. I'll show it in a bonus episode, though. But we'll save here. In case it does run out, but it won't. And you can't put the oxygen mask on, even though we're running out of air. What's up with that? It doesn't work. It should let you try to do that. You are inside one of the emergency escape vehicles. There's a console at the front of the vehicle, and a sleeping chamber at the rear. Gee, I wonder what you're supposed to do. You are in... Through the viewport, you are once again impressed by the empty vastness of space. The chamber is a bed of sorts, enclosed in a large plexiglass cylinder. The occupant of such a chamber would be placed in... Yeah, we know. So you can't look at the exhaust? You can't touch the coldness of space. No way. That would be instant death. Ah, uh, I should let you. There's nothing to touch. It feels like glass. Uh-huh. Feel... Nobody can hear you. The view screen doesn't smell bad. That's a good thing. I guess. No there's nothing to taste. The shuttle smells surprisingly. There's. In space, nobody can hear you scream. Open! This late in the game and you're still trying stuff like that? I feel sorry for your mother. So do I. Yeah. It smells. Given Vohal's grotesqueness, you wisely decide against running your tongue against something you haven't cleaned yourself. Hang on. Now I think about it, you've been doing that all game. Hmm. You run your tongue against the sleeping chamber. It tastes weird. Thank you. Refer to the smell comment and replace smelling with licking. Huh. It doesn't go well to be smelling people's doors. <laughs> And smell something which is outside the escape vehicle. No? I wish you were outside so I could see you try that in space. I wish I was too! It doesn't work. I guess not. Alright. Well, we're not gonna be running out of air anytime soon. It does take a really long time. It should have made it so you had to make a split second decision or instantly die. But the chamber is a bed of sorts. We'll just do the obvious. You slide down the plexiglass cover. We got a full score. You make the split second decision to enter the sleep chamber. It seals automatically. It wasn't split second. Soon you are overcome by a pleasant drowsiness. 
This is certainly better than suffocating. You begin to drift away into a deep sleep. With the satisfaction you have accomplished your task, you've come through in the clutch and you deserve a nice long rest. Now if someone would just pick you up somewhere along the way. Careful what you wish for. So long, Roger Wilco, and thanks again for saving your people. The end for now. Alright. So that's the game. Completed with a full score and saw most of the deaths. We'll see all the deaths later in a bonus episode. What did I think of the game? Well, I liked it, especially that I've waited so long to play it. One, two, three, four. Oh, what's this? Did they record this just for this game? Well, I guess we'll listen to it. I wish you could get the soundtrack from this game, but I was on their website and apparently you can't yet. You hear me, Infamous Adventures? Put your soundtrack somewhere where people can get it on your website. Especially that Space Quest 4 metal remix. Alright, so I guess we're looking at all of the stuff from the AGI version. Like the mailbox and the roll hall and the spacesuit. Dog portraits. Now, only if their mounts synced up with what they were saying. Blazing along through the sky. No, I did not like Roger's voice in this game. He was a little too meek, in my opinion. Yeah, Roger's an idiot, but I always got the impression that he was a confident idiot. You know, especially becoming a captain in Space Quest V. You know, that was Roger at his best, I feel. Hannibal Lecter as himself, yeah, okay. Oh, Scott Murphy contributed? But what about Mark Crow? What happened to him? Josh Mandel from the Letter Droid Show. He was King Graham. Back in King's Quest 5, 6, and the remakes of 1 and 2. And I think 3. Both of them. Well, so far, 
greatest adventure of his life so far. Who is this dude? Well, that's Elmo Pug. And what does he want with the two guys? Well, he wants them to make him good games. Like Astro Chicken. Gee, I hope the animation's better than this if they do this game. Yes, you escape the Annihilator with the Orat on a stick or those jelly things, something. Or you push him into some gears with a pulley. Yes, you get the Thermo Weave underwear when you sell the Orium Gem to Fester Blast. Yes, I know that game. That was my first Space Quest game I've ever played, was 3. I played it when I had a CGA graphics adapter of four colors. Oh my god, that was bad. What was the deal with that... with those vans and stuff? That that wasn't on any of the planets in Space Quest 3. In the buildings. Most of those planets were desolate in that game. Coming soon? Really? No, not really. Was it gonna take another five years? Maybe you guys can work on patching this game first. I mean, it was a good game and all, but it, it did feel kind of rushed with all the little mistakes. And it, that's what they were, little mistakes. You know, like, the things that weren't voice acted or the voice parts that didn't correspond to what the text box was or the obviously wrong voice acting part just mistakenly put somewhere where it shouldn't have been. Wait a minute, I tried to go to that screen and it wouldn't let me. What? All of a sudden now there's something over there? And I couldn't go there before? And they're roasting the Predator. What is this, like the, uh... The Ewoks celebrating at the end of Return of the Jedi? Kind of like that? Yes, it is. That's what it sounds like. Well, why would the apes be celebrating? They're marooned here now, aren't they? This isn't their home planet, is it? Yeah. It's never explained. So, this is Big Los signing off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a bonus episode. And Tango and Buendia.